this is seriously unreal. And yeah. I literally feel like I'm in like the Vikings movie or like Game of Thrones yeah, right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. Just like walk out like you're like Viking warrior. <laughs> no, you guys can't laugh. <laughs> I'm not laughing, I'm smiling. But... Oh, it's gonna be serious. It's gotta be serious. Oh, three, three, two, one, go, Con. Tola, walk out, start walking, and then you guys meet in the middle. Serious, serious, keep walking. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thirst trap. What am I doing now? You want to sleep? Yeah. All right. Okay. This is the right thing. Okay, miles. Miles to Madison two. Take one, Reykjavik. Quite all set. Annie Thoris' daughter is the fittest woman on earth in 2011. 2012 repeat champion, Annie Thoris' daughter! Annie Thoris' daughter ties Rich Froning for the most amount of podium finishes by an individual athlete in games history at five. Last year, my goal was not to win the games because I knew I could not win the games. Daughter, the only woman to ever compete in three different decades at the CrossFit Games. Long live the Queen! I did not go in with expectations to take third. That was a really positive and an incredible surprise. I don't know what's in the water in Iceland, but apparently it produces great CrossFit athletes. You have Annie Thoris, daughter, two-time champ. Catherine Davis, daughter, two-time champ. Sarah Sigma's daughter, finished on the podium. And Bjorgen Carl Gumitsen, one of the most consistent men we've ever seen. So the talk of the town has been Annie Thoris, daughter, switching over to a team. Last year, she had such an incredible performance, so it was a little shocking to see Annie go team this year. I've always had it in the back of my mind. One of these years, I would like to try to go team. Had a fun conversation with Matt Fraser. <laughs> the initial reaction was like, hell yeah, I'll go team. But I wasn't trying to pull him into that. I was more like getting his opinion, like who do you think would be a good fit? Reykjavik is sort of an international super team. You have Con Porter, who came all the way from Australia to Tullamore de Quino, picked up from Las Vegas, and then Lauren Fisher, most notably of the Invictus crew, and actually stood on the podium with them, said, Iceland sounds good about this time of year. I think I'm gonna leave Southern California and go all the way there. I talked to Lauren, and I just threw it out there. I was like, do you want to move to Iceland and maybe go team with me at the games? <laughs> and she was like, are you serious? He really just asked me through an Instagram message if I want to do a team for the CrossFit Games. Hell yeah, like, if we get the right team together, I'm serious. I want to win the games on a team as well. We still didn't have the two guys though, so that's when Tola and Khan came later in the picture. Yeah, we just get the pool and that in the background. That is Get under, good. get your shoulders under. No, do don't, it. don't tell us what to do. Tola Moraquino, probably one of the strongest individual competitors that we've ever seen. What's your best jerk? Four, or ten, four or five, three eighty-five. <clears throat> Khan has the blackout switch that very few people have. Every single person that I told back home, hey, thinking of doing this, they were just like, oh yeah, you've got to do it. I'm like, why wouldn't you do it? That's an amazing opportunity. Annie messaged me, I, kind of jokingly maybe, like, hey, you want to move to Iceland and go team? And I sat there and I just looked at my phone and I was like, cool, let's do it. All right, we have our team. It was like, okay, I'm doing this. Like, we're doing it. Ooh. That was, that was two wraps. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So just like hold it and then you middle it. Two wraps, three, two, one. I was doing three, two. Who's in charge of this team? What do you think? <laughs> Annie, honestly, is like the Michael Jordan of CrossFit on the female side. Annie is our captain and Annie is the one who came up with this idea and she put us together so she's the leader of this team for sure. And then you're going out and Tola's sure. coming in. Yeah. I can't even imagine like the level of training and knowledge that I'm going to get this year from her and just how much we're going to push each other to be better athletes. So literally everyone here is so good. I mean you got you know, like the best of the best of the best to try and just fucking hold on next to. 
would like medium. to have like a slow, like a steady pace with yep. everyone, yeah. and then I would like to have a fast pace as well. I don't think I've been this motivated to train for years. I do believe that I am still getting better, and I think I'm going to be in the best shape of my life come games this year. It's just like no matter what the workout is, someone's going to crush it. And so when you're training next to them, it forces you to lift, forces you to want to do that extra round. I am looking at all of their forms, wanting to fix, make them as efficient as possible. I'm happily surprised almost as to how well they are already moving together. I'm scary excited for how that's going to be after a few months of this. This is crazy. It's like nothing I've ever done before. CrossFit Mayhem. They are your 2021 Affiliate Cup champions. Are they competitors to Rich Froning? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be tough. We are going in with a goal to win the games. And that's how I like to play. I told Annie I don't want to come to Iceland to take second place at the CrossFit Games. You know, there are so many good teams that are out there. There's so many great athletes coming together to form teams these days. So there's a lot of hype and a lot of pressure. Then I'm hoping that it will be exciting to see my team versus Rich's team. Obviously, we're coming in to see underdogs. We know they're the best. They know they're the best. They can be beat. Annie Thoris' daughter's team is going to have to come together pretty quickly. And assuming they get to the games, they're going to have to have about as flawless a run as you can get in order to win the whole thing. I want us all to put in our best effort. I want us all to become better athletes this season, push each other, make each other better. I'm not going to expect anything else. Nobody's unbeatable. He's just got a good team around him, and I got a pretty freaking awesome team around me. <laughs> For me right now, can there be two Annies on one team? If there could be two Annies on one team, I, I would have to do it. I love Kyler. I'm a huge fan. I just like the way that he approaches people. Like I don't. I mean, I think he's intense, but I think he's like not one size fits all. Underdog, take one. Say the real question is where do I leave my coffee? Like right now is really the beginning of the season. We're nowhere near a peak, so we're we're just kind of you know just kind of training, working out the kinks a little bit, getting back into it. I would say. Nice, Rob. My general philosophy as a coach is I am constantly in pursuit of helping people reach their maximum potential. I think we can push it a little bit on the, on the pace of the intervals built, that you've got built in rest. Whether it's nurturing. Hey, you good? You hit it? Whether it's tough love. The one fucking chest of bar you drop down, don't fucking do that. Whatever it is that people need and you can't treat every athlete the same. I describe Justin's coaching style as very nurturing and he does his best to like go up to everybody and just to make sure that they're they're okay and I think that's a big thing. In the past you would then go like 950 on the row or 900 on the row. Yeah. I want you to try to be able to hold over a thousand on that row. And he's also emotional in the best way possible. That's it D, come on baby! Because you know he truly cares and is there for you not just as an athlete but as a person. Three, two, one! Time! It was beautiful. Hey, you did exactly what we wanted to do on that rower, which I feel like in the past would not have been the case. Yeah, so that was fucking good. Nice job. One of the biggest attributes and, and something that I'm proud of myself about over the years is that I've become a much better listener. When I started as a coach, it was one of those things where you feel like you have to prove yourself. You went out hot, but I'm okay with that right now. Like because you're gonna be able to keep that pace eventually. I'd rather be aggressive now in practice. And I feel like that's something that I've learned over the years is, is sometimes shut the fuck up and listen. We started here in Vegas. You know, my wife and I moved out, Carrie moved out. 
one thing led to another, you know, and then Danielle and Bethany were like, we want to come to Vegas. And now we've got Allie Scuds here with her boyfriend. We've turned into having, you know, anywhere in the gym each day is, is you know, between 10 and 15 athletes. I'm just a 90s hip hop guy. I mean, that's my, you know, my generation. It's become this incredible destination for, for, for athletes. And I, I look at it as it's a family now. <laughs> Perry, all y'all. Love you guys. Love you. So good. So proud. Going into the CrossFit Games in 2021, there were a lot of high expectations on Carrie Pierce and Bethany Shadburn. I think it's safe to say that both of them had podium aspirations. Yeah, the 2021 Games was was obviously, you know, it's, it's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. Let's see, a summary of what happened last year <laughs> at the 2021 CrossFit Games. It was going well. <laughs> the Shadburn tested positive earlier in the week. She is out. And this morning, it was announced that Carrie Pierce has also tested positive for COVID-19. Both women had podium aspirations here in Madison. Was there right at the arena, just arms lengths away. I was definitely uh, heartbroken. Carrie tested positive for COVID. So then she was out and then I was left and I had to be segregated from everybody. Test two to three times a day, every day of competition, be in a separate lane, have a separate warm up area, literally everything separate. Obviously heartbroken for Bethany and Carrie who I think were really, you know, potential podium contenders. So it was just really a gut shot, you know, to us. Um, and I know to them, obviously, but, but just to our whole crew, our whole family here, it, it was really hard to go through that. It was heartbreaking to see Carrie Pierce unable to compete. And it's even more heartbreaking knowing that she is now retiring. So with the way things went down, people asked me, why not take another crack at it? You know, you don't want to end your career after not being able to compete at the CrossFit Games, which you qualified for. And I felt super fit and it just would have been so much fun to get on the competition floor again with Bethany and Danielle. But I sat and thought about it for a couple weeks and mentally I just didn't have it in me. Honestly, my last moment at the CrossFit Games was finishing Atlanta, having Justin, my coach, be right there. All of my hard work and everything had paid off in that moment. And when I think of the CrossFit Games, it's that and being on the podium. So my definition of an underdog, you know, someone who just puts their head down, and constantly works to be the best, who's constantly clawing at you, like never gonna give up. I have learned to love Danielle so much for who she is as a person. She would be the first to tell you she's a challenge. Um, she's volatile, she's emotional, but I think that's ultimately, you know, what makes her a beautiful person and what makes her a great athlete. <laughs> I don't want her to just be known, you know, for her CrossFit celebrity, right? Because she was tatted up and she looked cool and, you know, she was the bad girl who flicked off the crowd. Like, that's not, no, like, we want that top five. We want those podium finishes. And she's working her ass off right now to get there. I, I'm really proud of her. Wow! Come on! Bethany, going into the games, I don't think anyone would tell you that, that you know, she wasn't on most people's lists of, of podium contenders. That's it, fast hands, fast feet. And if not for COVID, uh, I, I think we would have gotten to see a different Bethany than anyone has ever seen before. Our goal going into this year, again, is let's, let's get you through the season healthy, but let's build off of what we were able to achieve last year. I think first and foremost is just to have another healthy year. Last year, it showed me that I can. We've got a plan and like we've yeah. been sticking to it. Yeah. So I feel like I don't want to deviate too much from that, right. especially before Boulder. <laughs> Marty breathing hard. Once we get into semis training where they're battling day in and day out and just leveling each other up uh, for semis, that's going to be fucking awesome. That's pretty freaking impressive, Bethany. Iron sharpens iron at the end of the day. Us yeah. together, working together and pushing each other it's gonna be scary, really scary. We can propel each other to the podium. If you wanna see an athlete with a scary amount of untapped potential, look no further than Mal O'Brien. And as Han Solo once said, you're all clear, kid. Let's blow this thing and go home. Mal O'Brien will win event four. She is your 
your 2021 Noble CrossFit Games Rookie of the Year, Mallory O'Brien. If you would like to do a couple minutes of single unders, just straight single, just to get the cadence. Right now, your, your timing is just a little bit, a little bit too fast. <laughs> I'm only laughing because I know how you're just boiling on the inside. Mal O'Brien moved to Vermont to be coached by five-time champion and head of HWPO, Matt Frazier. Mal, I think, has a ton of potential, but she lacks the kind of knowledge that Matt Fraser can give her. And those two things together could be lethal. <laughs> All right, you're over it. Let's snatch. So right now we're in Williston, Vermont, and uh, we do probably about 90% of our training here at the house. Get that muscle memory dialed in at those body positions. Like, let's cut out as many variables as we can. You know, when the opportunity arose to help somebody else, I always tried to take it. Obviously, they were a competitor, then I'd keep letting them make their mistakes. <laughs> Control off the ground, accelerate all the way through. Get that bar close. Yeah. He's basically taking me under his wing and is coaching me. He's in there with me every day and it's just helping me become the best version of myself I can be. Same way, keep it against your thighs. Yeah. You know, I have some perspective that I wish I had when I was younger. If that's of any use to her, I don't know, I'll let you ask her that. <laughs> I have always looked up to Matt, and I mean, just because he's such a dominant athlete, it's like, it's amazing to watch him compete. Like every single time, you're like mind blown. The victory is there in the red shorts. That's Matt Fraser. Are you kidding me? What can this guy do? Once again, Matt Town is Matt's town. He is the fittest man on earth and the fittest in history. I'm pretty sure Matt got a Rookie of the Year award too. <laughs> One of the first serious conversations I had with Mal was me telling her what my, my expectations were, immediately followed by, what do you want from me as a coach? Think about tucking those elbows in and pull, pull your elbows down to your hip. It probably helps me the most like with self-doubt. It's like when I didn't have that, it's like, Oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know if this is the best way to do it. But with Matt, it's like, he's like, no, like, you can do this. This is what's gonna work. Like, you're fine. <laughs> it's not until you're fully bent over that you're following through with your arms. Think, think about dropping those elbows down and getting a strong pull as you're hinging. I think a lot of uncertainty with, with a lot of athletes is they feel a certain emotion. And it's not the emotion itself that, that they're concerned about. It's that they don't know if that emotion is good or not. Whether, oh, am I, am I weak for thinking this? Am I wrong for thinking this? And just confirming, like, no, like, your emotions are fine. It's how you deal with your emotions. All right, cut, cut the total bar down to 15, all right? He's honestly, like, helping me become, like, such a smarter athlete, and everything I do is with intensity and purpose. So, like, the 2021 season, I approached it like, I'm going to win the Open, I'm going to win quarterfinals, I'm going to win semifinals, I'm going to win the games. <laughs> Mal just wants more and more and more, and so, you know, always, always find myself pulling on the reins, but it's building out that foundation as big as we can so that she can take them one step backwards, take two steps forward, but with her, it's one step back, take five steps forward. She's nothing but potential. 33 to 34 strokes is great. Technique, right from the beginning. And then in that last you know, three, 400 meters, however long you have, that's when you bury the fucking needle. She is determined. I think even that's an understatement. I think every waking moment for her revolves around this. All she does is eat, sleep, train. It's kind of a coach's dream. You can hold that right there. This is what all the work is for. If you want to be the best, you have to sacrifice almost everything. Like there's not a lot of balance and leaving your family, your friends, pets, <laughs> everything you love at home, like, it's just, it's just how it works. Come on, all the way through. Let's go. You got this, Mal. You know, you're not having to convince them to not go out late at night. You're not having to convince them to go the extra mile. You're not having to convince them to push the pace. That's what she wants. That's all she wants. I am glowing right now. The two of you fucking smashed your paces. Yeah. <laughs> yes! 
We're not trying to set it up for the instant gratification of having concern about this year and this year only. We're looking for a long runway for her. When we're going out on the floor, I'm gonna do everything I can to be my best. And like, if I did that, then I am okay after the workout, no matter if it's 30th or first. Like, I did everything I could. All the way through. Should she, should I, should we feel like it wasn't a successful season? If she PR'd everything, got better and laid down a perfect foundation for a long, healthy career? Fuck no. Next time on Miles to Madison. It looks raw. So we're literally custom building a set. We're doing the blocking rehearsal. For it's not like we just show up, set up the cameras, throw on the lights. And go! Bethany Shadburn has a slight lead now on Danielle Brandon. I constantly compare myself to where I was the year before. You're going to see Patrick and I both trying to crush each other. I don't want to overinflate my own stock, but I will crush it all. Let the games begin. Are you the underdog? Are you the underdog? Give mama kisses. Give, give me kisses. <laughs>